Hi guys, this is Janet, and uh, this is the story of refinishing or restoration of a 1960s curio cabinet uh, that I bought on face Facebook Marketplace. Um, I saw the picture of it, and it reminded me of a curio cabinet, or what we used to call a china cabinet that used to belong to my nana. And it's in my mom's house now. And it looks like a very beautiful, restored version of what you see here. This particular curio cabinet came without shelves. The woman who sold it to me uh, told me that it was imported from England. And she showed me um, that it had a veneer on it that was chipping in a lot of places. Uh, she's very straightforward and a good representative of the furniture. It had what I think is just gorgeous looks, despite its kind of this condition. Uh, structurally, it was shaky and not the most sturdy piece of furniture. And it was hard to tell what kind of wood was underneath all that veneer. So um, just with it being unstable structurally or unsound, and then having all this chipped veneer. Um, we gave her $5 less than her asking price. She's very sweet about it. I mean, very kind. And uh, we took it away. Anyway, when we got it home, I put it on this tarp and looked at it uh, more closely. Here's the markings. It was marked by H and Company Limited, Herqual Cabinet Company. Um, it was imported from England and it had a date stamp of 1960. Um, the actual piece itself, because it was 1960, was probably a reproduction of something that was very popular at the turn of the century, uh, 1900. Uh, this particular cabinet did not come with the front panel, which was held together with these pieces of wood, and it was missing the glass panel that was similar to the glass that was in the rest of the piece. Also, these uh, particular structures, the pillars, were a good example of how the it was peeling. And a lot of the hardware was old and some of it was rusted into place. Some of the screws were rusted. Every project has its challenges, um, but just looking at this from that first day, I could tell that it was going to be more of a structural challenge than anything else. Once I took off the bottom um, decorative cover, I could see that there was not um, an underlayer that would normally function as structurally supporting this piece. So we would have to build that into the cabinet. It looked like possibly it was taken out um, because of water damage. I could tell that there had been water damage to the bottom of the cabinet. Um, the back had a silk covering. My main challenge would be to evaluate what was underneath that wood, restore its functionality, and then of course to measure and add shelves. And then we'd have to figure out how to make it sturdier, possibly change those legs out, and then decide whether I was going to keep it or sell it. The first order of business was to take off these legs, which was easier said than done. The hardware that held these legs into the piece were screws that had rusted into place. You can tell that I've sprayed them already with WD-40. I tried to get them out and they were not budging. I went online and some people suggested oven cleaner, but I didn't want to do that. 
I'm going to go to time lapse because this took a long time trying to figure out how to get the hardware out. What it boiled down to was that I had to almost dig it out. Finally got some victory with the WD-40. But a lot of the screws took some wood with them as they were exiting. Get a close up of the screws. The back panel was yeah, just a flimsy quarter inch plywood. Kind of like the decorative panel at the bottom. I decided not to keep this hardware. I probably could have soaked it in vinegar and salt, but I didn't want to do that much work. I cleaned the whole thing with TSPN water, got to really know the piece. It's hard to tell from these pictures, but it felt pretty flimsy. The first order of business, I guess the second, was to start building that structurally supportive piece on the bottom. So we found some plywood in the garage and put it together like a puzzle and once I got it on top of the cabinet or on the bottom of the cabinet it was turned upside down I saw that I measured incorrectly gee what a surprise anyway I decided just to sand it down make it smooth and unnoticeable once it was right side up This is the wood once it is right side up. Sanded down some of the screws, couldn't pull out. I had to cut them with the saw. Anyway, I used uh, Gorilla Glue's wood glue. And after cleaning the bottom again, just went to town with it, just loaded it up. And literally, that wood started sucking up the wood glue. That's how thirsty that wood was. The next day, Mario helped me drill holes. And Mario helped me. He did it. He drilled holes, and we decided to use some legs from a mid-century piece we had. It felt a lot better. It is. It's perfect. As soon as I got through the wood... Okay, that's one. The legs themselves had, um, they had anchors, so Mario drew, uh, drilled these Perfect. larger holes for the anchors, and we decided to make Good. the slants All face each that. other, and we screwed those pieces into the wood. I liked the look of these a lot better and knew that now we could work on this piece. But it's going to take a long time because the veneer took a long time to remove. The only thing that was a real hardwood was the base. Pretty sure it was either mahogany or cherry is a good hardwood. But everything else was probably a pine that was covered in a veneer. And that veneer either had to be corrected with wood putty or peeled off. Peeling it off was a chore. I tried the hot gun to melt the glue underneath, but I'm pretty sure it was contact glue. So it had literally adopted the, um, the veneer and formed some covalent bond that was unbreakable. And what was ending up working was paper towels that were soaked in water. And I just laid them on there and let the veneer bubble up underneath, hoping that the wood underneath wouldn't absorb the water. Oh man, look at that. Well, we'll see.
I did use a 5-in-1 tool for the stubborn pieces, but I had to be very careful. You can see where I had used the 5-in-1 tool and some wood came up with it. Once I had um, all the veneer off of the doors, it was easier to tell that I could not refinish this in a wood finish. It just wouldn't be the kind of wood that would absorb an even, no matter what kind of stain I used, it wouldn't absorb it evenly. So I brought in the doors into the house uh, because the contact glue was just so stubborn here. After several times trying to clean it off outside, I brought it inside just to have a, I don't know, a wetter experience over the sink. The corners were important because that's where uh, the joints were either in need of repair or they were going to show the veneer the most. Once most of the veneer was removed, uh, I had to sand it lightly for um, getting it ready to be painted. The top had a really nice veneer. I decided not to pull it off, but some of it in the corners uh, went flying off as soon as it met the sander. <laughs> so I had no choice but to take the little hand sander and sandpaper in T20 grit and just make it as presentable as I could for paint. After vacuuming, I washed it with mineral spirits. and then taped it up. This is called frog tape. It's supposed to not allow uh, streaks of paint to seep into the other parts where they're not supposed to go. And for the most part, it does what it's supposed to do. This is the paint that I chose to use. It's Diamond Hard Repurposed Paint, and the color is Ivory Flake. As soon as I started painting, the wood parts were sucking in the paint, so I knew it would take more than one or two coats. Right away, I felt the brightness. This is after the second coat. And I knew it would need a third coat. Two twenty sandpaper in between coats. Once I had the, um, the doors inside, I figured out that the molding that was holding that glass in place was crumbling, just like an Oreo cookie crumbs. I tried to take out the window, but I turned a little chip into a crack and then just said, heck with it, took window caulking and just caulked the glass into place 
with the Oreo cookie crumble stuff, hoping that it wouldn't interfere with the painting process. Reassembled the piece, and this is what it looks like with a coat, three coats of that paint. Still missing that middle window. Oh, there's the crack. Still missing the middle window, but we'll fix that. I knew I'd have to build shelves, so I measured with a box, a cardboard box, and then used that as a template, drew a chalk outline, and then cut it with the jigsaw. And it came out like this. Mario was so good. One day he woke up before me and went out to go get glass. He had measured the window because he's 50 billion times better at measuring than I am. He came home with this glass and thank God it just fit precisely. Even Sherman agreed. He suggested we unscrew the top, which we did. Once we unscrewed um, the top that would hold it into place, he fit it in, it clicked in, and oh my goodness. It just looked so good. Boom. High, High five. five. Okay. A couple of before and after shots. So on the left, of course, how I bought it. On the right, how it looks. I wasn't sure if I was going to have that top piece in place, so we experimented with and without, and I finally decided to put it back how it was. Thank you for watching, and here's the reveal. Um, I'm supposed I fall in love with pieces that I refinish, so rather than sell it. I decided to keep it with a copy of Shakespeare's works and some other beautiful books and some curio from our years in Africa. It's hard to explain the joy of restoring functionality to a piece, but rather than this thing sitting in someone's garage collecting dust just because it's beautiful and has potential, it now is part of our house. And also it's sturdy. It's hard to explain. It's so sturdy now. <laughs> and I love that about it.